Hi everybody. This uh, video today is a how-to video on how to make a very quick, uh, cheap, and lightweight pinhole camera. This is a great project if you have kids and you'd like to do something fun with them on a weekend and you, they could instantly see the results of a photographic experiment. Now, this pinhole camera will use a 35 millimeter film um, case and we have some uh, electrician's tape here for the shutter, uh, part of the shutter, and then these electrician's tapes are going to be to identify the, I'll show you how to, uh, a system for identifying this because, it, for instance, I made about a dozen of these because each one's good for one shot and then you have to take it back to the dark room and I didn't want to accidentally multi uh, expose them multiple times so I came up with a color coding system to identify each one differently. Also need a compass and a pin, smallest pin that you've got. This is the smallest pin I've got. I don't know what size it is, but it's tiny. Some scissors and a piece of photographic paper. Our analog for photographic paper is an old business card of mine. And uh, of course, anything you do with a photographic paper has to be done in a dark room with a safe light or no light. The first thing we need to do is convert this ca case into a pinhole camera. Now I've seen some videos on YouTube and other sources where people cut a hole in the side of the case and then put a piece of aluminum foil or something like that over it with a hole. We're going to do this and make it a little bit simpler. Also, the distance between the hole and the film medium, whether it's the width or the length, uh, alters the f-stop, the aperture of the pinhole camera and alters the way that it works. My preference is to have the maximum distance between the pinhole and the film medium, so I'm going to put the pinhole on the bottom. Truth be told, I cheated a little bit, I already put the pinhole in, so you, but I'll show you how to, how to do it and where to put it. I'm putting it in the exact center. Take the pin. Ah, there we go. Even with the hole already in it, it's not the easiest thing to do. Slide it back in and out a few times just to make sure that any little bits that are on it aren't there. To test this, to make sure you have a hole that's not obstructed, you take this off and you just hold your eye up to this, cup it to your eye so there's no light coming in through the side, and then look at something like a light source or your countertop, something with a little bit of detail. If you wear, if you wear glasses, that's fine too. I find that I have a very strong prescription. Looking through this, what comes through is in focus when I'm looking at it, even without my glasses on, and that's because the pinhole, the pinhole is uh, sending only very in focus light to your film medium, in that case your eye. Uh, so the next step is going to be to make the shutter. Here we go, here's the shutter. Um, for the shutter I usually use a, a piece of uh, 120 film backing paper or uh, uh, something equally dark. It has to be light proof. Uh, you could also use photographic paper if you wanted to use that don't use a piece of plastic or aluminum foil because it's got to, what you use has to be able to contour to the uh, shapes on the bottom of the case. So we're going to take just a little tiny bit of our photo paper analog here, an old business card. I'm going to cut that square out. There we go. I'm going to take this black electrician's tape. I'm going to give myself oh, about uh, two and a half, three inches of this. Maybe, I don't know, however long that is should be fine. Cut that, done with it. I'm going to fold the edge over so I have a nice tab here that I can grab onto. And after I put the, the shutter on, I'll show you how it works and why that's important. Grab our little piece of light proof media. I want to make sure that the light proof media lines up with the hole. Press that on. There we go. And you can see that there's a, r a raised area where the light proof media is. It's not perfect. Let's try that again. That's better. Now the light proof media covers the pinhole. So get that nice and pressed on there. I'm going to stretch the electrician's tape because that makes a neater finish. There we go. A couple air bubbles, not a big deal. Now the way that the shutter works is pretty simple. Once the, once the paper is loaded in here, or the film is loaded in here, shutter is open, shutter is closed. 
the way I'm showing you how to make this, the exposure times are in the one and a half to two and a half minute range, depending on light. So this is uh, it's not an incon it's inconsequential how long it takes you to open the shutter. You just have to make sure that you're very still. Next thing I'm going to do is mark this because if I have two or three or five of these, I want to make sure that I can keep them straight. So I'm going to take a piece of red electrician's tape and I'm just going to go right around the top of it like this cut that there we go after the video because I'm running out of time on my memory card I will do others so that the identifi identification is complete the next thing you're going to need to do is load this with film or paper. I'm going to take this compass. I've already got it pre-measured, but I line it up so that the pin's in the middle here so I know how big of a circle to make. I'm going to draw the circle and draw this on the back, not the emulsion side of the paper. That way, whatever you draw won't mess with your final result. I'm just going to cut this out. This isn't going to be perfect, but the purpose of this type of experiment or fun afternoon project with the kids is not to be perfect. I'm going to take this piece of masking tape, wad it into a little loop, put it in there, make sure the emulsion side, the shiny side, is facing you, put it in, seal it, and you're ready to go. Find a place where you can set this down and take your exposure without shaking it. It can't have any shake and you'll be in good shape. Most photo papers are approximately ISO 6. On a sunny day when I tried these out, I was running about 90 second to, uh, to 105 second exposures for proper exposure. And this is a very quick, lightweight, and fun activity you can do and you can get some interesting results.